Okay, I just first want to say thank you to Chiara for organizing this session. Um, very happy to be here. Uh, my name is Sofie Sheehan Janssen. I am a first year PhD student at the University of Oslo in Norway. And uh, today I will be talking about inclusive and participatory practices at Norwegian museums and how the use of food and food waste in dissemination practices and events might function as a tool in order to generate community engagement, active participation, and the co-creation of heritage. And the photo in the background here is from an exhibition opening uh, from an open ear museum called My Heaven, where uh, high school students from the local area made and served food based on local traditions. Yeah. And my talk today will be divided into two parts. So in the first, I will discuss social activist and inclusive practices in light of the new museum definition approved by the International Council of Museum in August this year. In the second part, I will discuss how the use of food and food waste in museum events aligns with these concepts and the possibilities and limitations of using food as an inclusive strategy. And I just want to say that since my project is still somewhat in its early stages, uh, the ideas and arguments presented here are preliminary, and I will not include any final answers or conclusions that I'm discussing here. Um, okay, so for those who are unfamiliar with ICOM's museum definition, this was the standing definition un until recently. And it was updated in 2007, and had only undergone small changes since it was created in the 1970s. Uh, recently, it was decided that this definition was outdated and in need of renewal. So ICOM established a standing committee to propose new drafts based on current thinking within the international museum field. And in 2019, they proposed this definition. So I won't go into details regarding the process leading to this definition. However, it is safe to say that it created a heated debate that resulted in one of the most controversial assemblies in the history of ICOM. And the definition was um, criticized for a number of different things, but perhaps mainly for a terminology that many saw as too activist. And I've highlighted some of the more contentious terms here, as you can see, such as polyphonic spaces, critical dialogue, so social justice, planetary well-being, just to name a few. And the definition was, for example, termed a political and ideological manifesto that simply did not address the traditional functions of a museum. And eventually the decision to vote on a new definition was postponed. So following this, um, a new definition was proposed and approved in August this year. And as you can see, almost all of the more progressive terminology has been left out, and the ones that have continued on has been toned down. For example, equal access has been replaced with accessible, and the sentence that museums should work in active, active partnership with and for diverse communities has been replaced with the notion that museums operate with the participation of communities. And it is also worth noting that concepts such as decolonization, repatriation and restitution are absent from both definitions. So what these definitions show is firstly, that there is no clear consensus regarding what a museum is, what it should be, and the roles that museums play in today's society. And secondly, it demonstrates that while there apparently is a great willingness, among some at least, to work with more social activist strategies within museums, there is still a reluctance to state this explicitly. And while accessible, inclusive, diversity, participation and so on are important notions, they seem to be somewhat limited in their ability to challenge the status quo. So to illustrate this, we can turn to the Norwegian museum heritage sector, where emphasis on inclusion, inclusion, participation, and diversity have been central parts of museum policies for the last 25 years. A number of museum projects over the years 
uh, show that many Norwegian museums put a lot of effort into working with inclusive strategies. And many report that the sector has made strides to become more open and diverse. At the same time, studies also show that the public's use of museum has remained relatively stable during the same period. And that despite dissemination and programming targeting specific groups, the museums do not seem to reach new, new groups beyond regular visitors. Studies have also shown that the success factor of project is largely dependent, dependent on the aims and actions of individual museum staff, in addition to the availability of funding earmarked project focusing on inclusion. As a consequence, inclusive practices continue to be seen as something on the side of other traditional museum tasks. So these make up the background and framework for my uh, project. And as mentioned, I'm studying how Scandinavian museums use food and food waste in dissemination practices and events, um, and how this is used partly as an inclusive strategy. And I'm not claiming that using food in museum events has the capacity to change larger structures on its own. But I will argue that food has the potential to open the museum up not only to a greater variety of people, but also to alternative cultural expressions. But before I discuss this any further, I want to just briefly describe my project and the methods I'm using. So I am doing field work at Scandinavian museums using qualitative methods such as surveys, participant observations, and interviews with museum professionals and visitors. And my first step has been to map the use of food and food waste at Scandinavian museums through an online survey. Uh, the survey was sent out in August and it received about 160 responses from just over 140 individual museums located in Norway, Sweden and Denmark. And based on this survey, I have chosen a few museums to do more in-depth fieldwork. And the plan is to participate in food-related events conduct visitor surveys and interviews with museum professionals as well as community groups involved in the events. And even though I find it highly interesting and important to understand why museums organize events and dissemination practices involving food, I find it even more interesting to try to learn the views of those groups that the museums are trying to attract. What do they find important? How do they perceive the use of food and food waste in a museum setting? Is this, in their view, at all useful? And how do they evaluate this? So in order to try to say something about this within the time frame of a PhD, I have limited my project to two types of food-related events or practices. The first includes events that emphasize food and food waste from minoritized cultures as a way to actively enhance cultural understandings between groups and where minoritized groups are actively involved in the events. And examples here are events such as the Mexican Day of the Dead, which you can see in the top photo here, which is celebrated each year at the Museum of Cultural History in Oslo. And the second case type includes museums that disseminate national historical food ways as a way for visitors to engage in a hands-on way with a more traditional and authentic experience of a specific national path. An example here is the Norwegian Folk Museum, where you can watch the making of and also buy the traditional Norwegian flatbread called Lefse, the bottom photo here. And I find these two case types compelling as they allow me to look at how food can play different roles in different types of museums, but also how food in all cases is used as a means to attract and engage audiences. So why food? Firstly, recent studies focusing on individuals with multicultural backgrounds and their relationship with heritage has shown that cultural heritage often is emphasized as action, as ways of doing. Heritage such as food and food waste is consequently seen as important because it is alive. It is more a cultural practice than still heritage. In addition, food can be seen as central to what has been termed a sensory revolution within the humanities and social studies during the last three decades. During the 21st century, museums have received critique 
for privileging a single sensory visitor experience based predominantly on sight. Consequently, multisensory engagements are increasingly seen as important in many museums, not only as sensorial devices aimed at children, but also as essential for mature reflection and thinking, as well as for the construction of new forms of knowledge with publics as active creators of content. As such, multisensory museum practice can be seen as important within decolonization practices and to encourage other modes of knowledge production. And these notions are also supported by the findings from my survey. As mentioned, the main function of this survey was to map the use of food, but the number of responses, as well as the level of detail in many of these, clearly shows that this is a topic that engages. And many noted how the multisensory aspect of food and food waste greatly enhances the overall museum experience. Whether the point is to disseminate local historical food waste or contemporary multicultural food waste, the sensory aspect allows for deeper experience than only viewing and reading about objects and histories. Also, many noted how food is something that connects people despite language barriers and cultural differences, that it facilitates dialogue and debate, and that it has the potential to be inclusive and attractive for many different visitors. The enjoyable and attractive aspects of food has also been a recurrent theme among the responses. And I do believe that these sides are worth exploring further, also in connection to how they work as inclusive practices. Because when presenting my project elsewhere, it has been commented on that food and food waste might equally be an easy, soft way for museums to approach diversity questions, a way for museums to check the diversity box without committing to any real involvement, and that food is presented as non-political and neutral, hiding away the real frictions and controversies in society and the fact that food can, for some, present a very unsafe topic. And I, for, of course, I view these comments as important. And one of the things that I hope to discuss in my project is the possibilities, but also the challenges and limitations that lie within the use of food as an inclusive strategy. At the same time, even though something might be perceived as easy, I don't think that that necessarily must mean that it is wrong or unhelpful in some way. And I don't think we should underestimate museum practices that are, are perceived as fun and enjoyable, and that at the end of the day actually attracts visitors. And several respondents mentioned that events, including food, are something that both attracts new visitors, as well as returning visitors who show up specifically for these events and that the positive aspects of food can help lay the groundwork for positive and lasting relationships between museums and community groups. So to sum up, I want to return to the newly approved ICOM museum definition, because while the addition of new terms such as inclusive, diversity and participation of communities signals a recognition of current thinking and more activist practices within the museum and the heritage sector, it still goes to show that there is some reluctance by some museums to acknowledge the role that museums can have in today's society. And much of what is perceived as more activist and inclusive work continues to be on the margins of other museum tasks. And the Norwegian museum sector is not exempt from this. And it is therefore important to study practices that can contribute to making museums more inclusive. And even though I don't have any answers at this point, I do believe that everyday heritage practices such as food and food waste can provide new insights into how museum audiences engage with heritage, what types of heritage are viewed as important, and how this, how this might be further employed to attract a more diverse audience. So, thank you.